Greetings, lovers of myths and legends. Who doesn't know Medusa, the Gorgon? Surely, everyone has heard her story, as she is the most famous of the three Gorgon sisters. In reality, it's not as simple as it seems, as some sources only mention one monster, like in the works of Homer and Euripides, stating that Gorgon was born from the earth and killed by Athena, while others speak of three Gorgon sisters living beyond the ocean. But that's not the only confusion surrounding these snake-haired women. Today, we will try to bring clarity to this confusion. So, as I mentioned, the confusion about the Gorgons lies not only in their number but also in their parentage. According to one version, it was Gaia who gave birth to all the Titans, including the Gorgons, while according to another version, the parents of the Gorgons were Phorcys, the god of the stormy sea, and Ceto, the goddess of the malicious abyss. There is also a version that states the Gorgons were the children of Typhon and Echidna, who also gave birth to Cerberus, his brother Orthus, and the Chimera. The most common version is the one where the Gorgons were the offspring of Phorcys and Ceto. By the way, in this version, the Gorgons were not initially monsters but, on the contrary, they were beautiful maidens. Medusa, in particular, was exceptionally beautiful. She had a slender figure and luxurious long hair. All women envied Medusa because there was not a single man who didn't dream of marrying her. However, Medusa couldn't get married because she was a priestess of the goddess of war, Athena. The priestesses of Athena were bound by a vow of celibacy. But could that stop Poseidon, the lord of the seas, who desired the beautiful Medusa Gorgon? Blinded by his desire, he appeared to Medusa and possessed her right in the temple of the great Athena. In punishment, Athena cursed Medusa and her sisters. The beautiful girls turned into monsters. Their skin became covered in wrinkles, and their luxurious long hair transformed into venomous snakes. But it was only the gaze of Medusa that turned anyone who dared to look at her into stone. Thus, Medusa, whose beauty was envied by all girls, transformed into a gorgon, which in ancient Greek means terrible. In the end, Athena banished her and her sisters to an uninhabited island. According to another version, Medusa's sisters, Euryale and Stheno, chose to become monsters out of compassion for her fate. People told horrifying stories about the cruel and bloodthirsty gorgons to each other. They quickly forgot about the former beauty of the Gorgons and eagerly awaited the appearance of a hero who would rid the world of the repulsive Medusa, under whose gaze everything living turned into stone. This is the most common myth about the origin of the Gorgons, but according to other versions, such as the ones where they were born from Gaia or Typhon and Echidna, they were already frightful creatures from the start. By the way, regarding the idea that only Medusa could turn anyone who looked at her into stone, this is also a debatable question because other sources attribute this ability to all the Gorgons. Additionally, some myths mention wings on them. By the way, I got carried away while telling the myth about the Gorgons and haven't properly described their appearance. Naturally, there is also a lot of variation in the depictions of these monsters' looks. Typically, they are depicted as women with live snakes writhing instead of hair on their heads, but additional features can be added, such as boar tusks or, as I mentioned before, wings. They are portrayed as either hideous old hags or quite beautiful young maidens or as nagas with a snake tail instead of legs, with the snakes on their heads still intact. Here's how she is described in one of the book. Their bodies were covered in shining and strong scales, like steel. No sword could cut through these scales, except for Hermes' curved sword. The Gorgons had enormous copper hands with sharp steel claws. Instead of hair, poisonous snakes wriggled on their heads. The faces of the Gorgons, with their dagger-like fangs, lips as red as blood, and fiercely burning eyes, were filled with such malice and horror that anyone who looked at them would turn to stone. They swiftly flew through the air with wings adorned with golden shimmering feathers. Woe to the person they encountered! The Gorgons tore them apart with their copper hands and drank their hot blood. Naturally, a reward was offered for the death of these monsters. Moreover, 
the warrior who managed to behead Medusa would receive the most valuable military trophy because even after her death, Medusa would turn people into stone. Warriors from all over the Mediterranean attempted to behead Medusa to gain money and obtain a powerful weapon against their enemies. Ancient Greeks believed that the power of the Gorgon could be used for both evil and good. In their language, the name Medusa actually had a positive meaning, it meant guardian. Her likeness was often used as a symbol of danger, and her head was depicted on the shields and armor of the most ruthless warriors in the world. Thus, as a result of attempts to deal with the Gorgons, a garden emerged, where hundreds of warriors stood frozen in different poses, transformed into stone by the Gorgons. This garden was called the Garden of the Gorgon Medusa. But one day, a young man named Perseus, the son of the god Zeus and the mortal woman Danae, set out on a quest to retrieve Medusa's head at the request of King Polydectes. The young man knew what a dangerous business the king, who hated him, had given him. Nonetheless, he promised Polydectes that he would only return when he had the head of the monster. Perseus's death was inevitable if it weren't for the help of the Olympian gods. Athena granted him her copper shield, which was so reflective that one could see their own reflection in it, and Hermes brought Perseus his sharp sword. First, Perseus encountered the Gri, three sisters who shared a single eye. Perseus swiftly took their eye and promised to return it in exchange for information on how to find the Gorgons. They hesitated but eventually revealed the information, warning him that Medusa's gaze would turn a person to stone. To confront the Gorgons, Perseus had to first go to the nymphs and obtain the cap of invisibility and winged sandals from them. Without these items, there was no chance on the Gorgons' island. The nymphs granted Perseus everything he asked for, and with the winged sandals, he soared above the earth. He flew until he saw a rock shining like a golden ingot opposite the sun. Perseus landed there and saw the three sleeping Gorgons. He did not know what Medusa looked like and hesitated. But then Athena came to his aid and whispered that his target was the one farthest from the sea. Looking at his shield as if it were a mirror, Perseus approached her and swiftly severed her head, taking it with him. The remaining two sisters woke up, but the youth was already invisible. He put on the cap of invisibility and escaped from them. From the blood of Medusa, the winged horse Pegasus and the giant Chrysor were born. And from the drops of blood that fell onto the sands of Libya as Perseus fled from the Gorgon sisters, poisonous snakes emerged, destroying all living things. These were known as the Libyan snakes, ASP, Amphisbaena, Amidit, and Basilisk. There is also a legend that claims corals emerged from the stream of blood that spilled into the ocean. That is a brief retelling of the myth of Medusa the Gorgon, although I may have omitted some details. Medusa was the only mortal among the Gorgons, her sisters were immortal, which is why Perseus took a great risk. Upon his return, Perseus turned Polydectes and his followers to stone and presented Medusa's head as a gift to the goddess Athena, who cursed Medusa in the first place. The image of the Gorgon is quite recognizable, not only in ancient times, but also in modern times. You can find it on buildings, various objects, and also in literature, movies, and games. Have you ever encountered a Gorgon somewhere? If so, please share in the comments or specifically.